Hi guys, welcome back to Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another Game Theory Struggle. Today we're starting to talk about the Cournot Duopoly model with some extra math. So we've talked about the Bertrand model in a previous video. Today we're going to talk about the Cournot model. And then maybe at the end I'll sort of contrast the two models. But all we're going to do in this two-part series is we're going to set up the model, we're going to solve it. And really what we want to talk about is why two firms can't collude, why a collusion or a cartel won't last in this model, because each firm has an incentive to defect. Very similar to the prisoner's dilemma, and in fact, we're going to use the prisoner's dilemma to show why that's the case. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So similarly to before, we have a duopoly, so we have two firms. So let's just name those two firms and sort of paint a picture as we're solving this problem. So let's say we've got two shops, they're across the street from each other. These are supposed to be parking lots, I didn't draw them very well, but those are what those are. So I've got two firms. On one side, I've got Tina's Things. On the other side, I've got Kristen's Knickknacks. And what we're going to have is we're going to have both firms have the same cost function. Their cost is just going to be some constant C times QI, where QI is the number of things and the number of knickknacks that each person is making. And just to make it easy, we'll assume that things and knickknacks are the same product. So maybe they're differentiated because you know what's Tina's and what's Kristen's. But in terms of what the actual product is, it's not that differentiable. So we still have market power. There's only two firms, but maybe the products are very similar. Now, the demand function for both of these, for any knickknack or anything that either of these two people are making, is going to be given by this price. And it's going to be some number A minus B times Q. Notice that I've made this capital Q rather than lowercase Q where I'm going to say that capital Q, so maybe I'll put this just up here for a second. So big Q is going to be equal to the sum of lowercase qt plus lowercase qk. So basically just the total number of quantity, the total number of things in this market. And now we're all ready to go. Now, like I said before, the whole point of this is we're trying to show why collusion doesn't work. We're going to use the prisoner's dilemma, and that's going to be in part two. But to build up to part two, we're going to ask a couple other questions. First, because I think these questions are useful to try and work through and try and answer, you're going to have to answer questions similar to these as you sort of build up to this ultimate question, Q4. And third, when we are trying to answer question four, we're going to need these quantities to help us answer that question. So that's why it makes sense to answer all three of these questions, and we're going to go through it one by one, and let's start setting up and answering question one. So question one is very simple. We're just going to say, given what Kristen is doing, what is my optimal amount of quantity? How many things should I produce if I'm Tina? And so if we're going to think about how many things Tina should make, we need to set up a profit maximization problem. That's the way I'm going to do that. So Tina has a profit maximization problem where she's choosing QT, and she is going to get some revenue from making QT things, and she's going to have some costs from making QT things. Now notice that I have price and I have this marginal cost, this is just total cost right here. But we said before that price was a function of how many things that I as Tina make, but also how many things that Krista on the other side of the street makes. So I need to think about both of those things. Now one thing to note, one thing to remember, I am only choosing QT, QK, or how many things Krista makes across the street. I have no control over that. It needs to be in my equation, but I don't get to differentiate with respect to QK. I only get to differentiate with respect to QT because I can only take first order conditions of variables that I'm choosing, and I can choose QT. I can't choose, I can't decide how many things Christian's going to make on the other side of the street. And similarly, Christian can't choose how many things I as Tina get to make on the other side of the street. So let's just substitute in this price. And so I'm going to take this. This might be sort of messy using the product rule if I'm going to take a derivative, and it's not that hard to go ahead and multiply it out. So that's all I'm going to do right here. And so once I have this, I can take a first order condition of this guy right here, and I'm going to just simplify that, and I'm going to solve for QT star, because we're in a first order condition, so I can put the star up there. And now what you're going to see is I'm going to get that QT star is A minus C over 2B, minus half of what Kristen is making on the other side of the street. Now because this is a symmetric problem, they both have the same cost, they both face the same prices, you can see, and you can do this if you set this up the same way for Kristen, but I'm just going to sort of talk intuitively through this. You can tell that if this is what Tina's optimal quantity is going to be, it makes sense that this should also be Kristen's optimal quantity, the only difference being that this is QT, or the other side of the street's quantity, which is very similar to how we have QK here. 
this is useful because I'm just gonna plug this whole equation in for qk star right here. And then I'm going to be able to solve for qt star without qk in it. So let's just do that real quick. And what you're gonna see is we're gonna get that if I go through all this math. Take a second, make sure it makes sense to you. If not, put that in the comments below. And what you're gonna see is I'm gonna get that qt star or Tina's optimal quantity. It's gonna be the same as Kristen's optimal quantity. That's gonna be two times a minus c over three b. So again, if anything in the math tripped you up or you think I made a mistake somewhere, comment below. Also, if this is helpful, please leave a comment as well. Super helpful. But now what we've got is we've got an answer to question one. And now we can move on to question two, which is to say, what if they were jointly maximizing their profits? What if they're maximizing their joint profit? What if they're trying to collude and act like there's only one seller of things in this market as if they were a monopoly? Well, like I said, if they are trying to pretend that they're a monopoly, they're trying to maximize their joint profit. So this is going to be a two part maximization, two part meaning we've got one equation with two parts in it, because now I do get to choose both Tina's quantity and Kristen's quantity. You can pretend that maybe they're in the back room, both Tina and Kristen, they're talking about how much each of them should make. And so they write out this equation on the whiteboard to try and figure out exactly what that Q star should be. So here we go. This is Tina's part right here. This is going to be Kristen's part right here. But now we're going to say that each of them should make the same amount. So we're gonna go from QT hat and QK hat to Q hat M, or the optimal quantity as if they were a monopoly. The reason that's the case is if they are acting as a monopoly, they should choose the same quantity because they have the same cost and they face the same price. So it doesn't make sense for them to choose different quantities. So now I can just put a two out here. This QK or QT is gonna become a QM. Same thing here, same thing here. And now I am ready to maximize or take the first order condition of this objective function. And that's gonna tell me what QM is. So I'm just gonna take the first order condition. I'm gonna get that Q hat M is a minus C over four. Now, one thing that's useful in terms of trying to check yourself in real time, if this is Q star and I'm trying to be a monopoly, we each should be making less. So that's a useful check right there. The third question is what if these firms pretended or thought they were in a perfectly competitive market where there's an infinite number of firms, not just two of them, how much would they make? Well, in a perfectly competitive market, there's no market power, so there's no profit. So marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, which marginal revenue is just equal to price. This is what the price is. And so we can see that this has gotta be equal to C. And notice that this is BQPC minus BQPC because this is Tina's part right here and this is Kristen's part right here. So what you're gonna see when we just do the math is that Q hat PC is A minus C over 2B. And again, just to check ourselves as we sort of check in this matrix, notice on this part right here that you can see that our monopoly is the least amount of quantity then as if they're competing and then perfect competition, which makes a lot of sense intuitively because the less market power we have, the more quantity we should be making. That's exactly what you can see as you go down this line. Now, we are going to answer the fourth question, which is why does collusion not work? And in order to do that, we're gonna set up a prisoner's dilemma. So notice, you can imagine that Tina and Kristen each have three options in terms of the quantity that they're choosing. They're gonna choose this simultaneously. So Tina can choose between making the monopoly quantity as if they're competing quantity or in perfect competition, now what's going to happen is we're going to see that if we just look at this box right here between as if they're competing and the monopoly. So again, suppose that Tina and Kristen get together and they say, let's collude, let's pretend we're a monopoly. We can get much higher profits and I'll show them much higher profits in the next part of this video. But suppose we can get much higher profits with the monopoly quantity than if we act like we're competing or if we actually compete. But notice that if Tina is going to play QM, I'm going to show you that Kristen is going to have an incentive. Her best response is going to be to play the quantity as if they're competing. She's gonna be able to capture a larger share of the market. And it's a symmetric game, so Tina's gonna have the same thing. In fact, very similar to the prisoner's dilemma, notice that Tina, at least in this two by two game, has a dominant strategy to play the quantity as if they're competing, and so does Kristen. So even if Kristen says, hey, we should be right here in this box right here, Tina has an incentive to defect, Kristen has an incentive to defect, 
So we're going to end up at this quantity as if they're competing and the cartel is not going to last. So again, the point really of this video was to get these three quantities using the math and just to explain the intuition of why the cartel doesn't last. In the next part of this video, I'm going to talk about the specific profits to make it a little more clear to show exactly that Q star Q star is going to be the Nash equilibrium in this game. And that's going to conclude the discussion of the Cornell equilibrium. So if this is helpful, if you're looking forward to part two, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.